Salutations viewers, you're watching Beaverco, I'm Ben and today I'll be doing a double upload. The first one will be a video about how the British government works uh, by request of Avery's younger sister and the second one will be a video about why I prefer DC to Marvel. So without further ado, I shall tell you how the British government works. As I said, this is a video that Avery's sister actually requested but it's also good if you're studying British history, modern British history because this gives a good oversight because it's a very political era. And if you're just interested in politics but you're not British or you're not really sure how the system works. So like many systems in the world, the British system is bicameral, so that means it has two distinct houses, the lower and the upper house. The lower house is known as the House of Commons, which houses all elected officials, so all people who represent the people. And that includes the Prime Minister and the Cabinet members, who I will talk about later. The upper house is the House of Lords. Um, there are no elected House of uh, no elected Lords. They are either hereditary peerages or they are appointed. So there are three main parties in Britain: the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, and the Liberal Democrats. There are numerous smaller parties such as the UK Independence Party. The Green Party, Scottish National Party, Sinn Féin, in, which is an Irish party. But none of them have any sort of scope on the three big ones, Labour, Conservative and Lib Dem. So the way that Parliament works is that there are elections every five years. The, the election always takes place on the first Thursday of May, so usually around the 5th or 6th of May. And uh, the country is split into 650 constituencies and so that's an area of about about 10,000 people and so um, the parties elect, appoint someone to run in each constituency and the public in that constituency vote on which party they want to win. Now that's the key difference. In America you vote on who you want to win so, we've, so in the 2012 election, Americans either voted for Mitt Romney or Barack Obama. In Britain, you vote for the party. So you vote for the person that the party has put forwards. So you do not choose who becomes prime minister. The party does. So in the 2010 election, uh, the Conservatives got the most votes. And so they chose their party leader, David Cameron, to be Prime Minister. However, there have been cases in the past where the party has tried to make sure that someone else has won. So they won the election, but they didn't want their current leader. So the important thing to remember about the British system is that you don't vote for the individual, you vote for the party. So as I said, there's 650 constituencies to win overall you need to win 329 of those constituencies if 329 is not met by any party we have what's called a hung parliament because there is more opposition than there is government so usually like we saw in 2010 what happens in that situation is that a, is that a coalition government is formed so two parties will agree to work with each other to form a majority the 2010 was the second time that's happened. There's a hung parliament. Um, February two, Febu February 1974 was the last time it happened. That time, the Conservatives who had won the election didn't actually manage to get a um, didn't actually manage to form a coalition. So they struggled on until October when they actually lost the election to Labour. So the chain of command once you're in parliament. Um, your party leader usually becomes prime minister, so he is the head of government. But he's not head of state. In America, the president is head of state, but in this country, because we still have a monarchy, the queen is actually head of state, but the prime minister is head of government. The prime minister also chairs the cabinet, which is a group of loyal ministers to the prime minister who have all the offices divvied among them. So there'll be someone in charge of finance, which we know is the Chancellor of the Exchequer, there's some in charge of health, education, agriculture, special in Britain, you've got a Minister for Scotland, a Minister for Ireland, a Minister for Wales, Foreign Minister, Home Secretary, so there's someone for every 
department in government. And then below them, you've got the House of Commons. So that's where all 650 MPs sit. Um, you'll have government on one side, opposition on the other. And that's where debating and voting takes place. And so that's how the British system works. And I'm going to quickly go through how a piece of legislation is passed. So it's quite a lengthy process. So let's take an example. Uh, in 2006, I believe, they passed a ban on public smoking. So you could not smoke in restaurants, buses, anywhere that was a public, considered a public space. So let's say that as our example. So the first stage is pre-legislative scrutiny. So a joint committee of uh, made up of members of both the House of Commons and the House of Lords review the bill. So let's take our smoke bill. So they review the proposed bill to pan public smoking and they vote on the parts of the bill that the government can accept and reject. So it's like <laughs> amendments for 1527A we think the government can re can accept, but they're going to have to reject or modify these amendments. So these reports are influential in later stages as rejected committee recommendations can be brought back to be voted on. So once it is passed uh, the pre-legislative scrutiny, it goes to the first reading. So the bill is presented in Parliament in the House of Commons um, or the House of Lords, depending where the bill actually starts. Um, and a date for the second reading is set. The second reading is um, more lengthy, so the bill is reread, and members of parliament are allowed to question the government on certain items in the bill, which is then followed by a vote. Then, if it passes the vote, it goes on to committee stage. So, a committee of about 20 people considers each separate part of the bill and is allowed to make amendments. So the committee is members of the government, not the opposition members of the government. So 20 members of the government take their bill back and edit it. Then um, they report back on their amendments and they choose which ones it's a bit like a revival of the pre-legislative scrutiny. So they take it back and they look for it again and they choose what can be accepted and rejected. And then a debate on the final text is given at the third reading. And so, again, it's the, it's the same as the second reading. There's another vote. And MPs are allowed to debate and question it. In fact, um, before I go on, uh, I was in Parliament for a parliamentary day uh, last October and they were reading a new immigration bill. And so we saw all of this. We, it was the second reading and so there was lots of debate going on about these immigration policies the Conservatives wanted to bring in. It's really interesting to watch actually. So if, a, if um, the vote is successful on the third reading, the bill is passaged to the other house. So if it starts in the House of Commons, which it usually is, it's passed up to the House of Lords. If it's the House of Lords, it's passed down to the House of Commons. And so they go through the whole thing again. So they have a first reading, no vote. Second reading, they're allowed to vote on it. If it passes the vote, committee stage, then report stage, then third reading. And then the passage is returned to the original house. Then there is pre-legislative scrutiny to consider all amendments now, everything, they consider the whole bill as a whole, as a final text. Uh, and then the bill is finally processed for royal assent because the Queen is head of state and so she has to um, sign off on everything that happens in the British government. And if she accepts, the bill becomes an act of parliament. So with public smoking, Queen says, yes, that's fine and it becomes law. So that is a very brief thing about how the government system works, how people are elected, how we make our laws. Um, if you hang around later today, I'll be posting another video, as I mentioned, about DC versus Marvel. I hope you have a nice day. 
this this upload will be the last upload in this location because I actually moved to university in two weeks. So um, two weeks today, I'll be posting another double another double upload. Uh, one will probably be a tour of my accommodation. The other will probably be a video about Doctor Who. So hope you can join me for that, and I hope you can join me in a few moments' time to talk about Marvel vs DC. See you guys.